Hi, Jared Jones here at Sutter's Forge State Historic Park. I'm here with by far one of the most popular items at the park here, Sutter's Cannon. Sutter had at least 12 cannons mounted around his fort in the mid-1840s, but the fort was never attacked. But there was a cannon that was fired often here at the fort. It was the original Sutter gun. In 1841, Sutter purchased Fort Ross from the Russian American Fur Company. And with his purchase, not only did he get his grist mill, tools for the blacksmith shop, other tools for other workers, a threshing floor for threshing Sutter's thousands of acres of wheat, he got a field artillery cannon. And it was a symbol of authority on the northern frontier. The fort was never attacked but he did fire this cannon often as a salute to visiting dignitaries. Dignitaries such as representatives of the Russian American Fur Company when they visited, or General Jose Castro, or when General Mariano Vallejo visited, or John Charles Fremont. This cannon, however, was used during major battles of the Mexican-American War. Prior to that, this cannon was used during the Mexican Revolution of 1845 in which Governor Manuel Mitchell Torreno was ousted. There would need to be nine men for a full cannon crew to fire this cannon, but I'm gonna show you this with just myself. Typically, there would be a gun captain commanding over the cannon crew, where two would be standing at the muzzle and at least one individual would be standing at the breech, the back of the cannon. We're gonna treat this cannon as if it had just been fired so I could go through all the steps. The first step that the gun captain would give would be worm the bore. The worm is a corkscrew-like device that'll be put down the muzzle of the cannon and twisted and that would be used to remove any excess debris that might be still in the cannon from a previous firing. But we have a potentially hot cannon barrel. And we don't want to put a gun charge down a hot barrel that might have burning embers still in it. It's very unsafe. So the next command the gun captain would give would be wet swab. The wet swab is a ramrod with a woven wool covering to soak up any water from a wooden bucket and put down the barrel to cool down the barrel and potentially extinguish any embers that might be still in the cannon. But now we have a wet cannon barrel. If we don't want to put gunpowder down a wet barrel, then it won't go off. So the next command given would be dry swab. Now that the cannon barrel is dry and clear, the next command would be present charge. An individual would walk from the limber, which would be a wooden box located about 20 feet from the cannon, carrying a charge brought to the muzzle, and then the individuals working at the muzzle would ram the charge to the back. After the charge has been rammed, a charge consisting of about five to six ounces of black powder in a cloth bag rammed down. The next command would be present shot. And this cannon could fire a, a three and a half pound cannonball as upwards of a mile. Of course, we can't fire a cannonball here at the fort. We'd blast a hole right through the wall in the corner. Once this is completed, those that are working at the muzzle would step out, signaling that their part of the firing would be done. They would stand next to the wheels with their tools ready. But this cannon is not ready to fire. They would have to prime the cannon. So here at the breach, the individual would take a brass pick. Brass so it won't spark like iron or steel might. He would put it down the vent hole at the breach here puncture the charge, and once the charge had been punctured, he would take a fine grain gunpowder from a paper cartridge and pour it down the vent at the breech, and also put a small pool of powder on the vent hole here. 
and that would create a fuse of gunpowder to connect the charge at the back of the cannon with our lens stock. Our lens stock is this green stick. At the end of the lens stock is a piece of slow match, which is a rope soaked in potassium nitrate, and that is what the individual would use to touch off this cannon. The gun captain would give the command, prepare to fire, clear front, and then give the command to fire when ready, just like this. You might be wondering, what happened to Sutter's cannon? He kept it with him when he moved to Hawk Farm in January 1850, and would fire it often as passing by ships would go by, or passing by wagons as a salute, a hello. But in 1865, Sutter's establishment at Hawk Farm burned down and he moved back east. And when he moved back east, he donated the cannon to the Society of Pioneers, who were building a museum in San Francisco. And that cannon was on display until 1906, when the museum burned down and was destroyed during the 1906 earthquake. But how do we have this reproduction cannon here today? Who cannons that went back to Russia with the Russian American Fur Company after they sold Fort Ross to John Sutter, they were still in Russia. And an individual went in the 1920s and purchased those two cannons, one to be housed at the Wells Fargo Bank in San Francisco, and the other one at Fort Ross, which was quickly becoming a popular museum on the California coast, just north of Bodega Bay. And in the 1980s, a mold was made from one of those cannons so we could have this cannon here. And we've been firing it often here at the fort for visiting school groups, for the environmental living and the environmental studies programs, and also during our demonstration days and living history days on the weekends. Check out suttersfort.org for more information about our programs and when we might be firing this cannon. This is Jared Jones here at Sutter's Fort State Historic Park with by far one of the most popular items here at the fort, signing off.